Hello, this is Gabi and this is week four of our 2020 mystery weave along. Can you believe it? We're already halfway through. Um, I can't. Time is, is just flying by. But uh, take a look at all the things that we're going to do this week, which is pretty much just one little step up from what we have been doing so far. Um, the theme of this week is to uh, go over and up, over and up, which means so far we have just connected our weavies in to rows and now we are just going up and adding rows to rows, which in in general is one method that I highly recommend. It, it helps to organize thoughts and designs and it, it uh, provides for a very smooth joining experience. You don't always have to do that and if you don't like it at all, you don't have to do it at all. Um, but I will show you a few things, a few little things, um, why I think this, this method really helps to, to organize the joining process and will lead to success for our projects. But before we look at week four in more detail, uh, let's take a quick review of week three. This was, uh, it was, it was wild, I will say that. Um, first of all, let me just see if we can zoom in here a little bit. Yeah, I think that will do. Um, so week three was, I wanted you to make a really very long strip. And here we can see Catherine's examples for both the squares and the hexagons. Uh, she did not just do a fabulous job, but also just take a look at the colors. And there were several projects this week again uh, where we where I was just saying this is like wow you know look at how those colors play together look at just the color effects and all this this is pretty much just one row of the project so it's very 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 promising um, here's another example from Maureen yeah it doesn't show very well uh, but one thing I want to show you here, let me see if I can hold this up a little bit. One thing I want to show you here is uh, she she joined just perfectly her hexagons and see how the little scallop edges at the at the bottom and at the top uh, line up just perfectly, which will help us going forward once we start adding rows to rows. Um, this is looks pretty much perfect it does not have to be perfect um don't get scared or frustrated if yours doesn't look uh you know perfect it's fabric it's it's yarn you can tell it where to go so um and i will show you a few things later on where if it's not perfect uh, you can work around it no problem but i just really like maureen's example for uh to show um of a really a really nice and straight line uh, again all those pictures are on pinterest actually not all of them most of them um so you can you can always use them as reference going forward and just one more example from catherine and catherine really can you see it all yeah i think so uh, I really enjoyed looking at Catherine's projects because the, the uh, Catherine is so brave with colors. She just uh, goes for colors and gives them a try and look at how what, what comes out of it is just a really very vivid uh, outgoing project. And uh, so this is Catherine and the other the, the energy that Catherine has. She posted something to the degree that like, okay, here's a week two. Uh, with, uh, with the 2020 uh, and week three with the cord and boom here it is and then she came okay and here are my hexes so she is one of the ones that's making both projects and I just had to laugh a little bit because it, she almost runs out of out of space here on her little bench and it was like boom take a look at this boom take a look at this and you know 
just if you strive for perfection just also uh you know just step out and just try things just look at all the colors here and look how vivid and happy they are i just this was complete happiness so i really enjoyed that a lot all right um a few words about the optional topic and i just hope that all the ad admins will forgive me because uh this was the making the rope became such an exciting project for so many and uh, it was really a delight to see all the different implementations from simple crochet hook to uh, the, the little uh, knitting machines. One thing that was very popular is the lucets. Uh, here you can see uh, Sue from Ravelry uh, with this perfect shiny corns. And she just ordered the, her lucet just for, for this optimal task. Oh yeah, and I need to tell you. Uh, Sue actually apologized because she didn't get her her homework done because she got so excited about making the rope with her new lucid. Well, I think uh, she's forgiven, but I really had to chuckle about this. Uh, here's another lucid, which was a very heartwarming story. Valentina in Spain. Um, she lives a little bit far away from everything and so her husband made her this this beautiful beautiful lucid and it's just so heartwarming to see that uh you know how they support each other and uh how he enabled her to to make her optional rope i really enjoyed that well we had one lady who uh actually used her knitting machine to make an eye cord and uh also we had several people that uh tried kumihimo this is probably the most sophisticated setup but we had we had several and i really enjoyed hearing from people this is like oh yeah i had this tool for years i haven't tried it or i haven't used it for a long time i always wanted to use it and you actually did it i i think this is so awesome and i'm really really happy to see all those ropes um just don't forget the weaving please all right Okay, let's take a look at this week. So goals for this week is weave and assemble the fourth set of six squares and hexagons. And uh, let me zoom out here so that you can actually see what this is about. For our square people, you will make two uh, sets of of three squares and uh, you will sew two of them together like this and then put one extra one on top and so we'll practice just uh joining you know not not vertically but horizontally and then for our hexagons we have a similar concept you make the rows first row one here and row two here and then you add a hexagon here at the bottom so that you have basically there's the row and you add another hexagon or later on we'll add a complete row to row all right uh let me see um yeah let's take a quick look at this so for the squares, you will need four in background color and two in CC1. For the hexagons, you will need two in background color, two in CC1, and one of each in CC2 and CC3 up here. You have the assembly instructions, and um, the first one is for the squares. And I will like to show you just a little bit on how this will work. Let me see if I can clear this out a little bit. And then let's zoom in because what I want to show you here is number one. So there's what I have prepared here is connect one background color to a CC1 
and we already know that how that goes and now I want to add a background color here to make such a kind of you know it's an, an L shape pretty much and what I want you to do is start the same way so when we sew the rows we make sure that we have the starting threads always at the same at the same point and we continue to do that so when we lay out our row here and add that hexagon oh i'm sorry not that hexagon that square the starting thread points into the direction the way it comes off the loom let me see if i can zoom in a little bit more here because i want to show you how easy this actually is we can slide them together and i'm not sure if you can see this yeah i think you can look at this how they just how the teeth or the little scallops just go perfectly together the same as what we'd had here on the vertical lines fits here so the key is have them continue to have them laid out in the same way i suggest the way they come off the loom have them marked somehow and then they just slide together like this and from there you can just take your handy dandy needle and i'll zoom out a little bit here and start sewing now here is another thing that i want to introduce you to uh, when you work with multiple colors like we do in this project um, always think about what color you use to sew them together for example if you were to you you have here this this yellow and this background color don't use a contrast color you can do this for a special effect for example a black would would uh, give a little bit of a stained glass effect but if you want to have a smooth look where you barely see the seams use one of the colors that match and we will see that a little bit more with the hexagons later on uh, here we just have those two colors so take a look at the threads that you have floating around here so that there's the yellow and here's the background color and they would both work you could both use them okay so here for this one i now use the 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 yellow and you can see here sliding them together so that the teeth get into the teeth and then picking it up and securing the thread and starting to sew and then the same the same thing in in the back we have the end of the scallop and going to the beginning of the front front of the back scallop end of the front scallop end to the back front beginning beginning end end beginning End. End. Beginning. Another thing is I go through the whole loops. I don't split the loops. 
of the yarn if possible it's not possible with all yarns but with this yarn it's certainly possible uh, which gives it even more the effect of a smooth join in the end but again you know if you split it don't fret this will be just all perfectly fine I have a few more here beginning and end and beginning and then here we have the beginning and there is on the corner I'll show you here on 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 the other see here this little one the the little dinky corner the little dinky corner and that has two loops and there where where and where the the uh, squares will join you just go through one of the loops don't pull it in too tight because that will also contribute to making a smooth uh, crossing or intersection all right so this is what it looks like just make sure that I don't hit so and this is the wrong side okay so if we turn it over this is the right side all right and then here would come the next square you would just keep on going here so later on when we have rows and rows you would just kind of keep on keep on going here okay so this is our square and you do the same if you have the square over the over the other top and I just show you this here so here are the two that are together post it the way it comes off the loom and you can see how the scallops get together find the thread that matches one of the colors that you're going to join and then you just sew it over all right i hope this helps a little bit uh, we will advance from there but for this week that's all i want you to do so just take that one and make it match find here the little the dinky on the corner and start sewing and across all right for the hexagons we will do something very similar and I'll show you this on this hexagon here. Okay. So here we have those two sewn together into a row like we did before. laid out the way they come off the loom starting tail to the top and tail to the right and then you sew them together vertically and today we will add one hexagon and have it slide in from the bottom so this is like you have the row on the top and you just slide it in from the bottom the principle is pretty much the same in, in both ways, so uh, don't worry about it, uh, whether you add it at the bottom or at the top. But for our layouts, make the layout work, we'll, we'll need to do this today. All right, and here, look at the color matches. We have two whites, and they could be used on both sides, and we have a blue. If I want to use the blue, I need to use it over here because that's where the blue is. If I would use it over here, 
it will bite a little bit because there's no glue here right so and this is what i meant before uh finding was finding the matching colors right so um just for better visibility i will use well actually we can use the blue one i think i'm not sure if this gets too dark let's take a look um with the hexagons because there are two weaving methods there are two different types of sides what we have seen so far is these little the sides with the little beads on it where we just connect the beads to the beads but there are four sides where you just have those those little wavy ends right and what we do here is if we match the two sides up i hope you can see this yeah i think you can you can see that there are actually waves on both hexagons and you can make them match and that's what i want you to do just make them match that's all you need to do and then you start sewing <clears throat> go through the center that's the front one. And then just line them up like this. And here's the trick. So I do, this is one thing I do. It's like one, two, three, and I skip the next one. So I skip this one and then I do the next do the next three stitches. One, two, three. I skip the next one. One, two. Three, and the last one goes into <coughs> the next corner. Why am I doing this? There are a lot of turns here on those sides and you could absolutely sew them all, but you get a smoother seam if you skip a few stitches and you can see if you look very closely you can see that there are stitches skipped but they are not big enough to make holes so you have a perfectly flat seam uh, without holes if you use that method um, again I will say you can sew them all there's nothing wrong with it but if you use something like that three skip three skip three uh, you get a really nice and flat seam uh, this also works if we're working right now with the original hexagons uh, you know if you have the fine set you have more sets of threes where you skip so there's like three 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 skip three skip three skip three or two or something like that uh, the idea is that you do about three stitches and then skip one to get a totally flat seam. All right, so that's all there is to it. Uh, and then you just do it here on this side as well. Um, and then in the end you get something like this. So this is the, let me show you the wrong side first. So this is the wrong side of the other set that you're making today. And if you turn it over, that's the right side. And you can see it, wrong side and right side are very similar, but the right side is even, is even smoother. Sorry, I just noticed that this was out of focus. I hope this is not too too bad 
All right. Um, this is all that we are doing this week. So we are going over and up. Actually, with the hexagons, we go over and down, but I think you get the idea. And here we have the over and up for our squares. And then, yes, uh, we do have one optional task, and this is uh, hopefully not too crazy. I think it's just pretty much for the fun of it, mostly. I have been thinking we're on, well, you know, including the, the six BBs that we are working on this week, we have more than half the pieces for our mystery project. And I thought it might be fun if you guys uh, just draw a picture of what you think the mystery project will actually be. And um, I drew a little picture of what I think, well, <laughs> To me, this is like, of course, I know what it is, so I can't really draw it. And even if I wanted to, it wouldn't come out great. So I'm actually borrowing an idea from one of my favorite ch uh, childhood books, uh, which is uh, The Little Prince. Uh, if you don't know it in the worksheet, there is a link to some Wikipedia information. And on that page, you also have, I think it's the first 27 pages of it on Google that you can preview. Uh, to just get an impression, but um, the fun part with this book is that it starts with, um, so it's a little boy and he's drawing pictures and this is his very first picture. And people ask him, this is like, okay, oh, this is a nice hat. You did a really good, good, good thing. But really what he wanted was an elephant inside of a boa. All right, and this is what I'm I'm uh, borrowing off. I can't tell you what it really is, and if even if I wanted to, I couldn't draw it. So, uh, here is my elephant inside of a boa. Uh, I want you to draw what you think uh, the Mister Project is. And your worksheet has a little space for that. So right right here on page four is a little space where you can just draw and you can, uh, you know, try to draw what you really think it is, or you can be silly as, as the little prince story uh, or anything, or you can do nothing. If you don't want to draw, um, that's perfectly fine. So I thought we just might want to get a kick out of uh, some of the mystery guests drawings. Um, the to-dos are this week, of course, please upload the pictures of your of your VBs. And if you want, this is optional, um, upload whatever you come up with with a mystery guess. Uh, please only one mystery guess per person so that we don't go too wild on this. All right, um, that would be all for this week. I hope you enjoyed the little demo. So we are going over and up on squares and on hexagons. Uh, and we are very quickly approaching the final few weeks. So I want to put my little elephant on here. And this is all there is to week four. And thank you very much for listening. Bye.